Hi, this is Pete from SilverlightHowTo.com and uh, this is video number two in a series that we're doing on styling a Silverlight button to look something very similar to the glossy button that you'll find on Windows Media Player. So in the previous tutorial we had styled up a button template so that it looked very similar to this. You had the gloss effects. Um, it allowed users to set the background color uh, on the button itself as well as this bottom highlight we actually uh, hijacked the border brush if, uh, to allow end users to actually set the um, the high bottom highlight color here so we did that in the previous um, tutorial and now we're gonna basically work on the rollover effects for these buttons as well as just prove out that we can actually make other buttons and uh, set some of its properties and use it uh, as as a consumer of the button. So let's uh, work on the rollover effects first I think for these buttons and then we'll go back and start using them as just a regular consumer. So first things first let's go back into the template of the button go edit template, edit current and we're gonna work on the mouse over effect first so I think what we'll do is for this background here We'll go to the assets here, effects, add a drop shadow to that background, and we'll just work on kind of setting some of the properties here. So I've set the shadow depth to zero, the direction to zero, so it sits right directly behind the button. I'm going to set the blur radius to 100%, so it shines around it, and set the color to something like that light blue to give it kind of a glow. All right. So we can't see it perfectly right now because it's sitting on a white background, but I think what we'll do is give it a dark background, which uh, will kind of highlight that uh, the glow a little bit more. Okay, so obviously we don't want this. We don't want this glow happening all the time, so we'll set the opacity right now to zero. But what we will do is move over to the states, to the mouse over um, state, and we'll set the opacity then for that state specifically back up to 100%. So it'll glow when you mouse over the button. Don't want that to happen immediately, so let's set the uh, transition time to about a quarter of a second, so we at least slow it down and there's a slight um, you know, delay for the glow. Alrighty, cool. So let's uh, move out, out of this template now and set the background for this route um, to black so we can actually see that glow and we'll run the project wait for the development server to fire up here and now when we mouse over these buttons we get that nice glow alright cool let's shut that down and take a look let's work on the press date now this isn't going to be perfect this isn't going to be uh, maybe what you want to do but it'll give you an idea of and at least give the end user an idea that they have actually clicked the button so I think all we'll do is when you do click this button um, the button will shrink a little bit and it'll give you a feel that it's it's getting pressed so let's go to the press state over here go to the view box itself I think and what we'll do is when the user presses that we'll scale it down to about 95 percent all right something very subtle but I think it'll give them the, a good enough feedback that the button has been pressed now feel free to add whatever state you feel for this but uh, for these demo purposes I think that's uh, sufficient so we'll go back up to the project run the project let's take a look at what we have okay very cool so one of the other things um, that I was talking about in the previous tutorial is the fact that you can actually wrap the the paths within this button in a view box and the reason we do that is so that all the paths scale uniformly with this button. Now that's all very well and good if you want to keep the aspect ratio of this button to square. Um, not so cool if we want to take that button I'm going to paste it, bring it over. If we want to take that button and we want to squish it to be more oblong and what you'll find here right now the way it's styled is if we do squish it it doesn't actually honor that bounding box and actually takes it and make sure that everything is still all nicely around which is not really what I want at least for this this button what I'd like to see is that the button gets and fills up that space and nice and very well and good so the way we're gonna do that 
is uh, it's a little tweak that we've got to do to the view box. Let's go back to here. Edit current, and we're going to go to the view box, and we're going to set the property here for stretch instead of to uniform, which basically will maintain that aspect ratio. We're going to set it to fill, and what it'll do is fill its bounding box rather. And just like that, you'll notice this this one now is being squished or uh, basically squished to fit into its bounding box, and uh, all the paths are squishing and stretching. Uh, to, to match the uh, shape of the button, which is exactly what we want. Cool. So that about does it for our template. So now we're going to be um, trying it out as just the user of the button or the consumer of the button. So I'm going to get rid of this guy because he's ugly and we don't need him. Um, and I'm going to select this button and now let's start playing with some of the colors. So let's copy this, paste it, bring it over. And uh, yeah, let's see what we can do. So this button here, let's, I don't like that dark blue. Let's do something that's a little nicer blue, a richer blue. We'll go with something like that. Yeah, I don't like that either. Let's lighten it up a little bit. Maybe something along those colors. Ah, really can find a nice blue. something like that. Let's go with that blue. Alright, cool. So there's a blue there. And let's make this a nice red color. So I want to drag this all the way up to there. And we'll set it to a nice red. And again, because we can play with this, this highlight, let's change that highlight to something along the lines of a nice orange here. So something along those lines over there. That works out cool. And then um, instead of se setting the foreground on each one of these individual buttons, I think what I'm going to do is uh, go into the template here, add a current, and instead of working in the template, I'm going to up here you've got the actual button control itself. Over here you've got the template that we've been working in, and right in the middle of the uh, style that glues the template through to the button, what I'm going to do is click on that style instead and I'm going to grab the foreground color and bear in mind that this uh, style has been shared across all three buttons so when I set this foreground color now to white it sets it on all three buttons. Alright, cool. Looking decent. So I think one final thing that we want to take a look at and I'm going to move back out of the style back into the buttons themselves is just to prove that there's no smoke and mirrors here that this truly is just a button like any other button I'm going to take this button over here and yeah, make it this button over here and we're going to set its content, replace its content from the text um, with just a path instead. So we're going to grab a rectangle, hold shift and alt and I'm going to grab a nice square right in the middle and set something like a stop button. I'll find something that's nice. There you go. Alright, so now you've got a path. If you take a look here, you've got the rectangular path within the button and our template because we kept the content um, in the in the template itself in the last tutorial the content presenter sorry uh, at template at current we kept the content presented down here um, everything still is good and as we would expect it and you can put a content any content within that button okay let's give it one final run and I think that'll pretty much uh, wrap up these uh, two tutorials so project Run project. Wait for the uh, developer and server to uh, fire up, and there you go. And we do the mouse over over the button. There you go, nice mouse over. We click on the button. You got the nice shrink on the button, and we've got three different color buttons. And this one's using a path for its uh, content, and these are using templates. So hopefully that's been useful. And uh, thanks for watching. If you would like more Silverlight tips, tutorials, and resources, please visit us at silverlighthowto.com.